Eeveelutions. The nickname for Eevee's evolutions are arguably some of the most popular Pokemon in existence. With their single typing, people have wanted to see what an Eeveelution of every type would look like. We have even explored that here on the channel. But what if instead of getting one new Eeveelution to cover each of the remaining types, how about we make new, dual-typed Eeveelutions to fill the gaps? Well, except for Bug. Hey everyone, Brandon here. Toward the beginning of this year, I released a video where we gave Reggies their own dual-typed evolutions, and y'all really seemed to like that. So this is sort of a follow-up to that, maybe even the start of a series. With Reggies being icons and their single-typeness, obviously the next step would be the other notable single-type group, the Eeveelutions. There are 153 possible type combinations. Big thanks to you all for correcting me on that last time, but obviously I'm not going to make 153 Eeveelutions. So instead of making those, we are going to evolve the current Eeveelutions and give them secondary typings that none of this group currently has. This time around, I enlisted the help of a bunch of different artists to help these Eeveelution evolutions come to life. So make sure to check out their links in the description and show your support. And if you want to become an Eeveelution yourself and support the channel, through your financial support you can become a Patreon! All the while getting awesome benefits like sneak peeks at upcoming Fakemon, videos early, and more. Click the link in the description or the pinned comment to check it out and help make more videos like this possible. Let's get on to the video though. But Brandon, I hear you say, most of the Eeveelutions are stone evolutions, which stabilize Eevee's DNA, meaning they can't evolve further. Well, in the end, this is all purely hypothetical, and even so, there are tons of things we had never seen Pokemon do before until they happened. So realistically, anything can happen. But I think I've come up with a bit of a story that justifies these Pokemon's existence. So you know the Eevee Evolution Lab that was introduced in Pokemon Journeys? Where Chloe's special Eevee that they never gave us any payoff for comes from? And they did research into Eevee and its different evolutions? What if they discovered that the unstable genes that were thought to be stabilized upon evolution were actually just laying dormant? waiting for another stimulant to activate them once again. This concept is known as epigenics, and is an actual thing. MatPat of Game Theory did a whole video about how this applies to Eevee as well, which you should definitely give a look after you finish this video. Regardless, none of the evolutionary stones or anything else the researchers tried proved to have any effect. So they brought in a specialist known for their research in bringing out the true power of Pokémon, Colress. Using his research of Pokemon Fusion and the findings the lab had already made about Eeveelution genetics, he found that splicing in the DNA of other Pokemon activated these dormant genes and truly completed them. Yes, I know this story is a bit fanfic -y, but isn't that what Fakemon is anyway? One big fanfic of Pokemon we want to see. In any case, let's see what the fruits of Colress's labor looks like. So of course, we have to start with the OG Eeveelution trio. And for these first two, I worked with the lovely Fungus Fakemon. First up is Jolteon. In his research, through trial and tribulation, Colress found that the genes of Dragonair were what awoke Jolteon's latent evolution, creating Drukius, an electric dragon type. I decided to evolve the Eon suffix for these names into Eus, coming from Nucleus, where most of the DNA of a cell is located, referencing the way in which these Pokémon have evolved further. Plus, it sounds pretty epic and legendary, which these Pokémon kind of are. As you can see, Drukius has embraced Dragonair's Danger Noodle proportions. But why exactly the Dragon type for Jolteon? If anything, shouldn't it be Bug type because it learns Pin Missile? Well, it comes down to Jolteon's design origins. Jolteon's fast nature and coloration may have been inspired by Cheetahs, who are super long and thin themselves. But also, it may have been inspired by the Raiju, a Shinto beast that could take the form of a dog. The Raiju could also take the form of a Porcupine, Fox, Leopard, Rabbit, or in our case, a Dragon or Quilling. So we took from a special kind of Thunder Dragon found across Tibetan and Bhutanese culture called the Druk from which Drukius gets its name. The Druk is also the national symbol of Bhutan, holding precious jewels that represent wealth. This form of Eastern Dragon is smaller and thinner than its Japanese or Chinese counterparts, as it spends most of its time in the sky. And thunder is thought to be this creature's mighty roar. Back to Drukius. The combination of Dragonair's genetics with this Pokémon have calmed Jolteon's previously sensitive nature. When it breathes, rather than a crackle, a loud, thunderous roar can be heard instead. It channels electricity into the horn-like fur on its head to create create a condensed beam of galvanic power. With each of these Pokémon gaining a bit of another Pokémon's DNA, I had the thought, what if these Pokémon received custom moves by fusing the moves each Pokémon knows? So that thunderous roar from Drukius's dex entry is an actual move, mixing together Dragon Dance and Thunder Wave. This move boosts Drukius's attack by one stage while paralyzing its foe. 
If this sounds broken, it probably is. I'm the ideas person, not the VGC balancing person. These evolutions would also have access to other ways for it to learn moves, such as TMs or move tutors, so this isn't the only stab move they could receive. Next in the original trio is Flareon. The DNA that unlocked Flareon's evolution was that of Hippowdon, evolving it into Saharius, a fire ground type. Saharius' name comes from the Sahara Desert, one of the largest and hottest deserts on the planet. With Flareon and Eevee itself minorly resembling Fennec Foxes which can be found in the Western Sahara, this was a great fit. Saharius also references a country connected to the eastern side of this desert, Egypt, which is where Saharius's Eye of Horus pattern on its fur comes from. The fact that Hippowdon DNA was used also works as a reference to Egypt and Africa as a whole given hippos are native there. Not only that, but Saharius draws inspiration from a couple other Egyptian deities with one being Mahis, who was a lion-headed god of war, protection, and weather, which plays into Flareon's partial lion and lion-headed rabbit inspiration, and the sandstorm elements of Saharius' mane. These elements serve as a combination between Flareon's mane and the sands of Hippowdon, and the dark underside of Saharius comes from Hippowdon's skin pattern. Speaking of dark underside, the strange tips of Saharius's ears make reference to a beast found within Egyptian mythology. This beast is associated with the god of chaos and lord of deserts, Set, and is known as the Shah, or just the set animal, due to its biological ambiguity. Saharius's fused move would probably end up being a lot like Scorching Sands. If not, just making it Scorching Sands. It just makes way too much sense for this concept and is already a pretty balanced move. Rounding out the original trio, we are switching artists to my buddy Kaifake Manasar, who handled Vaporeon in the Gen 2 evolutions. With the DNA of Delmize, Vaporeon evolves into Ethereus, a water ghost type. Vaporeon has the unique ability to turn invisible while in the water, due to its molecular structure. And you know what that sure sounds like? Ghosts, who can phase in and out of corporality. On top of that, Vaporeon is inspired by many forms of water spirit, such as the Talkinis and the Azrai, which are similar to mermaids. And speaking of mermaids, Ethereus pulls from the darker side of mermaids, being seductive singers using their voice to lure sailors to their deaths. You can see the kind of dichotomy of the mermaid in this Pokemon's design, looking lovely and elegant in the front half, which is what you would likely see popping out of the water, with a more sinister looking back half in both hue and design. Its sea green hair not only emulates a mermaid, but is also a reference to sea or water hags like Jenny Greenteeth or Peg Powler of English folklore, women who would drag those into the depths of the water if they got too close to its edge. Ethereus does much of the same, though only to potential prey, which luckily it doesn't view humans as. It will turn invisible in the water and use its long claw-like tail to drag and drown its prey. Ethereus's fused move, Depth Charge, does exactly that, in which it grabs its foe and charges into the depths. This attack would do base 70 damage and would have the opponent skip a turn to recover from nearly drowning. How would that work in the middle of a desert? Well, how do they use Surf or Dive everywhere? It's Pokemon logic. Don't worry about it. Speaking of the tail, it is inspired by yet another creature, this time coming from Aztec mythology, the Ahuizotl, also known as the Water Dog, which also has a tendency to lure people to their deaths, and had a prehensile tail with the monkey's hand on the end of it. Its fur would spike up when leaving the water, just like the spiky fur of Ethereus. The tail and hair also tie in with that Delmai's DNA, as well as the general idea of lurking in the deep, just like a sunken anchor. Ethereus's name comes from ethereal, meaning something so light and delicate it's as if it's not of this world world, but also as in something spiritual, relating to realms beyond our own, further playing into the juxtaposition of this design. Next, we move on to Espeon, whose evolution was brought about thanks to the introduction of Togekiss DNA, which created Zephyus, a psychic flying type. Throughout Espeon's deck entries, it is said that its fur is so sensitive that it can pick up on minute shifts in the air and predict the weather. Well, if that doesn't scream flying type, then I don't know what does. On top of that, Espeon is a daytime evolution, in which the bright blue sky is only visible during that time, which plays into its bright appearance. Espeon is likely inspired by the cat yokai the Nekomata, with its forked tail, psychic ability, and cat-like physique, but also the mythological lynx, which is said to have clairvoyance, and the South American mythological creature Carbunclo, which is said to have a red jewel in its forehead just like Espeon. So for Zephyus, rather than hamming up its existing mythological origins, I wanted to add even more myths that would help tie into the rest of the Evolution's vaguely fox-like appearances, as well as some mythological cats throughout the world. With that said, Zephyus's main inspiration comes in the form of a 
lesser known Irish chimera, the Enfield, which is said to be part fox, part lion, and part eagle. Some depictions have the front paws or claws include the wings of an eagle, which I obviously played into with Zephyrus's paws. There's also a mythical creature from East Asian myth called the Sky Fox, which, similar to the Kitsune, grows tails and becomes golden upon 1,000 years of age. Though, these creatures are thought to rise into the heavens upon this milestone in its new celestial form. Cepheus reflects this in its coloration, which is a reference to its beta sprite, and by growing an extra tail, which also reflects the Huan Cat, a one-eyed three-tailed cat from Chinese mythology. And speaking of cats, there are many, many winged cats throughout mythology, literature, and pop culture. The Akbars, the Lion of St. Mark, the Aurora Lynx, the Tresum, Cat Wings, and even Happy from Fairy Tale. These all feed into Zephyrus's design. Espeon's ability to read air currents is naturally enhanced upon evolution to Zephyrus, with its feather-like fur being able to read these currents during flight to adjust its trajectory at a second's notice, using its three reflexive tails. The star-like jewel encrusted into its forehead can absorb sunlight at a much more expedited rate in comparison to Espeon, which it then uses to rain down charged psychic attacks from high above. One of those attacks would be its new fused move, Air Strike, a base 85 flying type attack with a 30% chance to set up a tailwind. Zephyrus's name comes from Zephyr or Zephyrus, the personification of the West Wind in Greek mythology. On to Espeon's partner in crime, Umbreon. This evolution was triggered by the introduction of Seviper DNA, evolving it into Noxius, a dark poison type. This one is a bit of a deep cut. For those who don't know, Umbreon's beta type was poison before it was changed to dark, and its dex entries reflect that, with it supposedly having the ability to secrete poisonous sweat which it sprays at opponents. Even though, as of Gen 9, it doesn't learn a single poison type move by level up, TM, or breeding. So in turn, Umbreon's latent poisonous abilities have been fully unlocked upon evolving into Noxious, coating itself in toxins within seconds, causing any who physically touch it to become badly poisoned. Noxius's fused move would essentially be Baneful Bunker. The name, type, and concept all match Noxius and Umbreon, who are very defense-focused stat-wise. Umbreon has some ties to Roman mythology with Diana the Moon Goddess, who has taken the form of a cat, and Egyptian mythology with Bastet, who was a sun goddess that the Greeks misinterpreted as a moon goddess, and that just kind of stuck. To play into these Roman and partial Greek origins, Noxius' name comes from Nox or Nyx, the Roman or Greek goddess of the night. Nyx was also the wife to Erebus, the personification of darkness, and was mother to Moros, god of doom, the Caries, which were death spirits, Thanatos, the god of death, Eris, the goddess of strife, and the list of children having to do with something negative goes on and on and on, which is referenced in Noxius' dark poison typing. Its armored appearance and coloration are heavily inspired by Nyx's appearance in the popular indie game Hades. Its appearance is also partly inspired by another god of the underworld, Anubis, tying back to its partial Egyptian origin. Noxius' name, while a combination of Nox and the Eus suffix we have been using, also sounds like Noxious, as in something harmful or poisonous to living beings. You may have already noticed, but Noxius and Zephyrus kind of have a duo theme going on, with both referencing their beta version and realms outside of Earth with Zephyrus acting as a heavenly being and Noxius acting as a being from the underworld. Moving on to the Gen 4 evolutions and yet another artist, for these two I worked with the incredible Pokey Jamon. For the first of the two, we have Leafeon, who evolves when introduced to Ferrothorn DNA into Centurius, a grass steel type. In Leafeon's Ultra Sun, Shield, and Legends Arceus dex entries, it mentions how sharp and blade-like its leaf tail is or can become. So with Centurius, that becomes more literal, with it having steely head and tail leaves and vines wrapped around its body with the tensile strength of bridge cables. The spikes and vines across Centurius not only look like Ferrothorns, but the vines and its name make reference to the Roman military command commanders, the Centurions. The feathered helmets of the Centurion are meant to be reflected in Centurius's hardened head leaf, and the vines across its body allude to the Centurion's symbol of office, the Vine Staff a vinewood rod that was used as a tool in drills and maneuvers to beat lazy or difficult to control soldiers into shape, which Centurius very much also does. If in battle with an ally, Centurius will power whip them into shape, boosting their morale in the process. The spikes all over its body serves as a defense mechanism against physical attacks. Maybe its fused move could be spiky shield somehow? In combination with Leafeon already learning Leaf Blade, this sword and shield moveset would be enough to make the Gen 8 Legends shed a tear of pride. On to Glaceon, in which Carbink DNA draws out its evolutionary potential, evolving it into Dymius, an ice rock type. This Pokemon is a real ice queen. No, no, I mean literally. The combination of Carbink's DNA has brought out the genetic potential from both species. With Carbink holding the potential to mutate into Diancy, this has infused into Dymius, becoming a powerful Pokemon that could rival Diancy itself. 
This entire concept came to me when I saw that in many of Glaceon's dex entries that it can create Diamond Dust Flurries, which led me to Diancie's signature move, Diamond Storm. You can see elements of both Carbink and Diancie throughout Dimeus's design, with the little neck floof it has covering its mouth just like Carbink. This also serves as a small reference to the elusive, mouth-concealing, Ice Queen Butterfly Ranger, Rita Kaniska from Osama Sentai King Oger, for all my Toku fans out there. Dimeus has the ability to summon frigid crystals that both freeze and damage the opponent. This new move is called Diamond Dust, a mutated version of Diamond Storm, being both an ice and rock type move in the vein of Flying Press. Dimeus's control of ice and rock type moves is second to none, able to lead entire kingdoms made up of both types of Pokemon within the icy caves it calls home. Dimeus and Centurius also both share a theme, given their pre-evolutions shared a generation. Centurius references the loyal soldier, with Dimeus of course acting as the queen. They both also have quad weaknesses and share a weakness to fighting. Dimeus is even now quad weak to Centurius's steel typing, reversing their type effectiveness from their previous stages. Last but certainly not least, we have the final evolution to be introduced, Sylveon, which I worked with the artist Zabubble Zemmons on. Sylveon, when introduced to the DNA of Lucario, would evolve into Devonius, a fairy fighting type. Sylveon's ribbons have the capability to send out a soothing aura. What Pokemon has the category the aura Pokemon? Lucario. And what type is it? Fighting Steel. And what type is its signature move, Aura Sphere? Fighting. I rest my case. Let's not talk about those though, uh, they, they, they aren't important. Anyway, Devanius gets its name from and is inspired by the Slavic goddess of the moon, nature, and hunting, Devana. But why Devana, and why the moon? Well, Sylveon is likely inspired by the mythological moon rabbit, usually seen as a companion to the Chinese moon goddess Chang'e. So upon evolution, we switched moon goddesses. Also, with Devana being a goddess of not only the moon, but hunting as well, I felt it would be a good fit for the fairy fighting type. I know Artemis could have worked here as well, but I wanted to feature a less famous moon goddess, and we have like three Greek references in this video already. You can see the Devana inspiration most apparently in Devanius's braids, which are braided versions of Sylveon's ribbons, and are visually similar to the look of Mega Lucario's hair. Also, for some keen-eyed fans out there, this design is slightly inspired by Shiva's hair from her appearance in Final Fantasy X. At the end of its braids, you can see instead of bows, it mimics, well, bows, calling back to Devana's Huntress role. Also, the animals associated with Devana are sight hounds, which folds in nicely to the Evolution's sort of dog-like appearances. Devanius use their bow-like hair to fire arrows that can pierce the very aura of their target. This is their fused move, Aura Shot, a fighting type move with a 30% chance to drop the foe's special defense by one stage. And those are some dual-typed Evolution evolutions. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.